Okay, Jordan Cunningham, running for your third term here in the State Assembly. Thank you for joining me. Tell me what are your goals for the uh, next two years and the policies that you would like to put forth if you're reelected? Yeah, I think we need to have a strategy to both prepare for the impending closure of Diablo Canyon, replace the lost energy we're going to lose about 9% of the state's energy grid when Diablo goes offline. We're going to lose 1,000 to 1,500 head of household jobs. We need to have a plan in place to both replace that power generation. We've seen because of recent events that our, our energy production in the state barely matches our demand and sometimes doesn't match our demand. And that's not good. I think we've got a lot of potential here on the Central Coast to, to augment that capacity. We could do offshore wind off the coast. Uh, I think that's got tremendous potential to provide power and jobs. Uh, so infrastructure development and uh, having a plan in place for our post Diablo economy is gonna be very important. I'd like to continue our work to try to expand the commercial space uh, industry down near Vandenberg. We've got an anchor tenant, if you will, of sorts with SpaceX down there. It's been doing launches for years. Uh, it's got a, a unique feature to it. It's one of the only places uh, in the country that you can launch into a particular type of orbit over the, over the ocean, which makes it, of course, much safer. Uh, and we've got Lockheed and some other big players in that space that are interested in expanding the footprint of commercial space. That could bring a lot of uh, private sector jobs to the area, and that will trickle down to we can augment the career technical programs at Cuesta and at Hancock and at our high schools uh, so the kids that are interested in the career in avionics or being a, a mechanic or getting into the commercial space field uh, have a pathway to go do that. Uh, so that brings me to one of my other priorities is continuing to fight for and champion career technical education. Uh, I think that's really important. We've made great strides as a state in doing that so far. We need to make sure we don't backslide because there is tremendous opportunity for young people and, and career switchers, uh, you know, in the middle of a career uh, to, to make a great living in the skilled trades. And we need to have the programs in place that expose them to that and give them a pathway to that. Uh, and then cost of living and affordability, that's on the top of a lot of people's minds. I mean, you sort of spend half your life working to be able to come to the Central Coast. It's a beautiful place, so the best places to live in the country. I think, of course, I'm biased, but I think it is the best place to live and raise a family, uh, but it is not cheap. And you know, we need to make sure that we're sending representatives uh, to Sacramento that are aware of that, are doing uh, what they can do to ease the burden on our housing, uh, to build more housing, uh, making sure that we're not raising the price of food, raising the price of gas, and raising the overall cost of living through uh, too much taxation. There's a Prop uh, 15 on the ballot, which would raise commercial property taxes by 11 to $12 billion a year. A lot of that would be passed down to our small business owners and hit them really hard at a time that they can least afford it, given what our small businesses across my district have, have been dealing with in terms of survival because of uh, the pandemic related uh, shutdown measures. So uh, those are also a priority. We, I think all those things, and then also of course, I always carry a package of bills directed at fighting uh, human trafficking, the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the, in the world. Uh, it's growing faster in California than anywhere else. And we need to protect those victims, get them uh, give them resources to rebuild their lives and give law enforcement uh, the tools they need to uproot that out of our communities. Those who are for Proposition 15, which you mentioned, say the money is needed to fund schools. Uh, do you see schools being uh, properly funded right now? And, and if not, what do you think can be done to improve uh, public education? According to Prop, uh, Proposition 98, passed by the voters in the 90s, 40% of all general funds are required to go to K-12 education. Uh, it was part of a coalition, bipartisan coalition of legislators. Uh, when the governor this year issued his May revise uh, budget, it anticipated a 14% cut in K-12 that would have brought the funding level down below the Prop 98 guarantee. Uh, and we were able to push back and get those funds restored. So as it stands now, education, I believe, is the top priority of the state budget, and that's where your priority should be. That should be the first thing you fund and the last thing you cut, and we fund it through all the different types of taxes uh, that we already pay. I think we need, in terms of raising commercial property taxes, we need to look at the effect on our economy of that. We need to look at the effect on households when their food prices go up. We need to look at the effect on small businesses when their landlord uh, gets a quadruple of their property tax bill and tries to pass that along to the small business tenant. Uh, it's really going to hurt a lot of people, and I do believe, and, I, and history has shown, we can fully fund K-12 education 
uh, without these massive tax increases that drive business out of our state and keep businesses from coming and investing in our state. And we need more investment into California. We need our businesses to stay here and be able to afford to stay here, especially uh, during this pandemic and all the economic fallout we've suffered from it. We're in the midst of the worst wildfire season in California history right now. Uh, what kind of policies do you support to uh, decrease the frequency and the threat of wildfires? So I think the legislature's done some decent work on that uh, as a condition of PG&E coming out of bankruptcy. There was a bill uh, passed uh, last session that required that they make an investment, not just PG&E, but the other two investor owned utilities in California that they make a, an investment of $5 billion uh, to harden the infrastructure for transmission lines. Uh, it, that's an unprecedented investment. It's funded by ratepayers and shareholders of the companies. Uh, it's not passed on to taxpayers. Uh, for a long time, we, we have, obviously they have not been making the investments they need to keep us safe uh, and they need to start doing that. And I think they will under this new plan. Um, the other thing we need to do is better forest management. We have 129 million dead trees, it's estimated in California right now, uh, the largest number we've ever had. And yet there is a, a host of restrictions, federal, state, local, uh, the, the number of permits you need to get to go clear dead trees out of forest land, uh, the stack's about this high. Uh, we, we need to streamline that. I mean, we need to make sure that, you know, we've, it's, it's hotter than ever. We've, you know, we kind of have gone in and out of drought and the last drought, which lasted six years, uh, created a, a bad situation for fire management. Uh, so forestry management is important and we need to let uh, devote the resources to that, which you know we are doing. And we need to uh, strip away any sort of roadblocks so that people can go in and thin out the forest and take out some of those dead trees that are essentially just kindling. Do you believe that human caused climate change is an issue that is leading to the conditions that we're seeing? I think there's no question it's got uh, the temperatures have gotten hotter and warmer. Um, Cal some of that, you know, California has always been an arid climate. So, you know, there's seasonal variation over, over history there. Uh, but I, I have uh, long accepted the science of climate change. I understand that, you know, that's a problem uh, that we're going to need to solve as a country, as a state, as a species over the long term. I think there are a lot of technological solutions uh, to it. I think we need to decarbonize our energy production. I think uh, a smooth transition to electric vehicles will be helpful in uh, lowering emissions. I think it's a shame we're losing our last nuclear power plant, which produces 9% of our state's uh, uh, electricity and is 100% greenhouse gas emission free. And we've got a lot of work to do to replace that. And what we really need to be doing, especially as we're using more energy for air conditioning, uh, more energy for electric vehicle use, more energy for cloud computing in the modern economy. Uh, we need to build up at the same time we're doing more wind, more solar, more uh, that are intermittent power sources. We need to couple that with long-term storage, pump storage, gravity storage, battery storage. Uh, we need, um, that's a big problem for California. Our, our electricity grid right now is precarious. Uh, and if we coupled uh, those uh, production capacities with the storage capacity, so when the sun went down and when the wind stopped blowing, we could flip the switch and pump those electrons back into our grid, we'd be in much, much better shape. So we need to be supporting those types of projects both here on the Central Coast and all over the state. I wanna ask you about a, a police reform bill that you've sponsored, AB 1599, uh, which as I've followed it through the different committees that it's gone through, it's been amended from where you started it with a, a release of records where the public would be able to uh, see allegations or um, convictions of misconduct. And now, now it seems to be uh, more of uh, an oversight and uh, saying that an investigation has to be completed. But as best I can tell, that the public records part of that has been removed from the bill. What, what has happened to that? Well, that, that bill, I have a, uh, another update on it. It's dead for the year. We got it uh, all the way to the last committee in the Senate, but it got held in the final Senate committee. Uh, I thought it was a, a, certainly a meritorious idea and something I'm gonna continue working on uh, should the voters send me back for another term. What we're trying to say is if you're a police officer, 99.9% .9 of them do a job with integrity. It's a difficult job. 
uh, you know, they're running towards danger to keep the rest of us safe. Uh, there aren't that many professions or jobs out there in the world where you can literally put your life on the line. I mean, we've had two active shooters in the last couple months uh, in the North County of San Luis Obispo. Uh, so, you know, those officers have dealt with that very bravely uh, and, and have ended up in the hospital. So, but there, there are some situations and what this bill would have said is if you're accused and found to have committed sexual misconduct uh, on the job or lying on the job or excessive use of force on the job, uh, that, that once an investigation was completed, the records relating to that could be accessible uh, to the public. And I think that would go a long way to restoring some trust. Uh, transparency breeds trust and trust breeds transparency. And we need to be working on reforms like that. So I look forward to working on that issue, you know, should the voters elect me to another term. I think we have more work to do, but we got to strike the right, right balance because, you know, a lot of police officers are out there doing the right thing and they're accused of things they didn't do. And, uh, you know, those records really shouldn't go anywhere. Uh, but where there's in those specific circumstances where there's actual misconduct uh, and what we saw, what inspired my bill is a situation where uh, an officer had been accused of something, resigned before the investigation had been complete, and therefore was able to bury the records of that and try to move on to another department. And that's, that's the situation I think we needed to cure. That bill would have done that, I think, uh, in a balanced way. And, uh, you know, I look forward to working on something similar in the next term. It was getting votes. It, I didn't see many votes against it, maybe just a couple. Are you frustrated that it, it didn't make it all the way through? Well, that's kind of how it goes with legislation. You know, I've, I've had 18 bills, I think, signed into law, four bills combating human trafficking that the governors have signed uh, that have protected victims, have uh, given law enforcement more tools. Uh, so, you know, you win some, you lose some. I mean, you know, any, any, type, uh, any type of bill that's you know, in, in that sort of field of police reform. Uh, you know, I had a lot of law enforcement support, actually, by the time the bill got to the Senate. Uh, the law enforcement groups had either gone neutral on the bill or they'd come on board to support it because we were able to convince them and working with them that this was a, a fair and reasonable approach to, you know, to, to achieving all of these goals. Uh, but, you know, no one gets all their bills signed. It's just how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lastly, um, one or two issues that we haven't talked about that you'd like to bring up before we go. Well, I think we, this is one of the best places to live in, in the world. Uh, and it's a, it's a wonderful place to raise a family. Uh, we need to be mindful of not pursuing policies, uh, not sending people to Sacramento to represent us that will cast votes and, and support policies that increase the cost of living, uh, increase the price of gas, increase, increase the prices of food, uh, increase the price of housing. We need to do more to build out our housing supply. I've been proud to support a number of bills that I think will help in terms of letting people use their existing property to add ADUs and granny units or subdivide and things of that, of that nature. Uh, but, and I'm very glad to see on the Central Coast, we've seen uh, kind of a flurry of building and that's a good thing. Uh, you know, we've got a huge mismatch of supply and demand in our housing market that we've got to take steps to address. Uh, so, you know, cost of housing, cost of living, uh, you know, taxes, food, gas, it all sort of adds up. I mean, a lot of people retire here. They want to live out their years and enjoy the beauty of this place. And we, as policymakers, in my view, have an obligation to them not to be doing things that price them out. And, and, and you know, so we need to work on our business climate in California overall, making it more attractive to grow your business here or bring your business to, into our state and make sure that we're uh, protecting the middle class and in particular retirees on fixed incomes so that we're not um, indirectly forcing them to move to somewhere just because it's cheaper. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate it, Scott. Thanks. Take care.